Let's now turn our attention to Boko in the Upper East region. Our checks indicate businesses are grinding to a halt and the security uh, situation there is deteriorating. The Social Security and National Insurance Trust, the SNIT, has become the latest institution to shut down its operations in Boko following the attack and killing of three persons by unknown assailants around the Boko Senior High School in August. Residents and business owners are unsure when the next attack will take place. They suspect the conflict between the Mampurisis and the Kusansis could have triggered the recent killings. Some of them are now feeling or fleeing the town. We'll hear from a journalist based in Boko shortly. We'll also speak to the head of MUSEC and a member of the Interior and Defense Committee, as well as a security consultant. It's a full package. But first, our in-house data analyst, Kofi J, will give us data on the Boko conflict. And Kofi, this has uh, persisted for um, you know, some time now. But you've yeah. been looking at data from between December 2000, well, 2021 exactly. till now. What did you find? So, and as I must state that since 1983, 84, and 85, when we had the renewed clashes, it has not been easy for the people of Boku and its inhabitants. But if you look at this uh, chart, you can actually see at least we've been able to count five separate, you know, um, curfews on the township. So right from the first one, which lasted for 21 days, the second one lasted for 14 days, and the one that lasted for long, was the third renewed curfew, which was 43 days. Um, the fourth one was 19 days, having the fifth one to be 25 days. So there you have it, five separate curfews from the 1st of the December 2021 uh, to September 2022. Now, if you look at the details of these curfews, the first one was 1st December 2021. And this was a renewed curfew, actually. And the time was between, you know, um, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. It means that the curfew was placed on the people from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Now, this was renewed um, on 22nd December 2022. And the time was actually changed from the 6, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Now, from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. Now, the third, when we come to 2022, we, we can actually see about four separate curfews and renewed curfews, first being first, um, you know, um, 5th January 2022, and we also have one in August 2022. There's also, there was also one just 5th September, and we also had the most recent one being on the 26th of September 2022. This is supposed to be between 6 p.m. Uh, to um, 6 a.m. But, Ernest, I want us to now look at um, some interactive map looking at the Boku area and see what we are talking about. So this is the Boku area. This is actually the Upper East region you see over here. And this is the Boku area with its environment. This is the Boku, you know, West, um, you know, district that we're talking about, having a population of more than 144,000. Here in the yellow is, we find Bundori, which also has a population of 76,679. And then also, um, there is Garo Tampani with, with a population of more than 158,000. There's also um, Boku Municipal itself, having a population of more than 119,000. The last one uh, being, you know, Pusiga with a population of over 80,000. Now, if you combine this whole area and their population, is more than half a million. So if there should be a clash or anything of that sort, you can actually see the security implication in this area that we're talking about. Quite, you know, massive in terms of the population they have there, more than half a million NS. Thank you very much, Kofi. So five different curfews renewed just within uh, the short period. And um, let's go on to Zoom now and have a conversation with the Municipal Chief Executive for Boko, uh, Hamdu Hamza. And he joins us live uh, with some update on the situation. Uh, Mr. Hamza, thank you very much for your time here on Joining News Prime. So SNIT, we know, has shut down. The impact, of course, will be dire if this is not addressed immediately. You must be worried as a head of the Municipal District uh, you know, Security Council. You'd have to unmute if you can, if you can hear me, sir. 
Well, if you can hear me, Mr. Hamza, thank you very much for joining us on Join News Prime. Uh, the impact of SNIT having to shut down will be dire if, if this is not addressed immediately. Uh, as, as music, you must be worried about the trend that this is taking. Well, it appears we have a challenge uh, reaching uh, Hamza there via Zoom. Uh, maybe we can reach him on phone and bring you an update on the situation. But let's speak to uh, Peter Tobu, uh, Peter Lancini Tobu, a member of parliament on the Interior and Defense Committee. He's also MP for Wild West, and he joins us on the line. Uh, thank you very much, sir. So residents are raising concerns that this could actually escalate into a full-blown conflict between the Manpruces and the Kusansis in Boko. Are these concerns founded? Mr. Tobu, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear now. Yes, and, and so are these concerns of the residents founded that this could actually escalate into a full-blown crisis between the Mampusis and the Kusasis? Thank you very much, my brother. Let me say good evening to our Charles B. West and listeners. Um, the Boko crisis is, is a dire one. And we are talking about the crisis blowing into a, a, a full state of conflict. I think that we've gotten to a state that everybody, the Kusasis should be worried, the Mampurusi should be worried. Because the conflict, as we all know, is causing deaths and injuries. It is resulting in population displacement. It is resulting in destruction of assets. It is resulting in disruption of the social and economic system of Boko, a very beautiful town. So if this continues, and as it is now, Many of these institutions that are trying to create a social cohesion to de let Boko develop will close down and everybody will leave the scene. And we are going to have a cascading effect of the conflict that will take many years to resolve. So mm -hmm. gradually, all of us will come to the appreciation that the men and women in uniform in Boko are supposed to create a space whereby government or the stakeholders would get into to find a lasting solution to the Boko conflict. When we deceive ourselves that the presence of the soldiers and police will give us peace, no, they are not there to create peace. They are there to maintain what they have. Peacekeeping is about keeping what is peaceful. If there is nothing peaceful to keep, their presence there will only escalate the expenditure levels, and we we'll use the little man that we have to spend on them, and Boko will continue to go down and down and down into memory lane as a very destructive town. And so what would you suggest uh, must be done immediately if the presence of security officials will necessarily uh, not address the situation. I have recommended, and I, I do believe that this conflict should be looked at with a very serious eye as it's, it's, it's of an international dimension. Can we have experts within or outside the country to treat this conflict as a conflict that can actually have a cascading effect on the whole country? Because there are a lot of kusasis in Accra, there are a lot of Mampurises in Kumasi, there are a lot of kusasis in, in, in Takradi. So the problem in Boko should be treated as a national one, not just limited to the Boko and its environs. So we should look at conflict management aspects. Let them get in there in the, with the presence of the soldiers and police. That is that space for us to create that peace. If we can't create it, the soldiers and police can be there for years, but nothing will happen. We'll bring curfew upon curfew. Nothing is going to happen. Are we willing? Are the factions, the Mampuses and the Kusas, are they willing to say, look, the, 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 the solution is within us. If we don't bring it out, nobody helps us. I'm grateful for your time. That's Peter Lancini Tobu, a member of parliament on the Interior and Defense Committee of the House. He's also a former police officer and MP for hours. Let's return to the phone and speak to the Municipal uh, Chief Executive for Boko, uh, Hamdu uh, um, Hamza, and he joins us. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, at this point where we have SNIT shutting down, um, do we know if other businesses are also leaving? Uh, what, what is the update that you have on your table? Mr. Hamza, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes, and so SNIT is, is shutting down because of the security situation. Uh, per the briefing that you have, do you know if other organizations have also uh, pulled out of the area? Uh, yes, indeed. I'm terribly worried about the trend of events in Boko. Once again, good evening to you all and good evening to my cherished listeners. Yes, um, SNIT indeed has not closed completely from Boko. What is happening now is that they have moved out of Boko temporarily. The workers said that their lives are in danger. 
and they cannot continue to work in Boko or operate in Boko under this terrible situation. And so as a result of that, they have actually shut down temporarily. Yes, this is not the first time they've done it. At the point um, from last year up to the beginning of this year, they could close for a week or two, move away. The workers would travel back to where they came from. Majority of the workers in Boko are not indigents or citizens of Boko. And so because of that, they would want to go and visit their families and come back. But this so is not it pleasant. does not suggest that they have moved permanently from Boko. Mm, but but, but this is not pleasant anyways, Mr. Mr. Hamza. This is not pleasant and it's not good for economic growth. Uh, you should be able to have some consistency there. I guess what they need is some assurance of a stable security situation. Uh, Absolutely. Can, can, you, can you promise them that? Yes, I have done that. Members of the Municipal Security Council have looked at these in a number of occasions. It's not only um, if I tell, if I tell, in the beginning of the year, there was a concern um, about the Boku Nation Training College. So they had a temporary relocation to Borgatanga, the capital of Upper East Region, and spent about four to five months there, and they returned. They returned barely last month. And so um, it's not the first time an institution is moving away. But I know, I've spoken with the workers and have also spoken with the manager for Snit in Boku, and assurances have been given to them. They said they will come. As we talk, in the last two, three weeks, Boku has been calm. We don't know, but I think I'm convincing them to come back. Mm. It isn't that they are moving permanently. It's just a temporal measure they are using to do. Other institutions, such as the National Identification Authority, have similarly... Um, uh, had concerns to tell me that indeed they want to move out and then come back. And they look at the situation where you are working in the office and you would hear gunshot. Uh, definitely should be worried. My staff at their mm. family, mm. when they say gunshot right now, they move away. Majority of them are not indigents of Baku. They come from neighboring countries like And Medina, so what has been like done Volga. to address the situation, Mr. Hamza? The Interior and Defense Ministers, uh, we know, as well as the IGP, have been in your municipality. What, what is the resolution to, to tackle this issue? Uh, Mr. Peter Lanche has just told you something. I don't think that there is a permanent situation that can come from outside. It has to necessarily come from the people of Boko, i.e. the Christians and the Mampristis. They must begin to give peace a chance. It is their responsibility to say that, look, today we are putting the gun down. The arrival or the coming of the interior minister, the defense minister, the IGP, the chief of defense staff, look, just imagine, that is the entire security arrangement we have in this country. They came to Boko. And so when they came, we have every cause to visit the Bokunaba, Zugrana, Azoka, Asigri, the, the second. They spoke with them and also told them what they intend to do. They should give peace a chance. They promised that they would do the same. Then we went to Boku Secondary School where we met the youth of the Kusasis. We moved from there and we came back to Natinga where we met the Manrana and his elders also. Then we moved to the Boku Nursing Training College and also made the man push you. Mm. Similar messages were sent over there. The cardinal point is that the Kustasis and the man pushes must give peace a chance. It is only the responsibility of these two factions. They can meet, judge or, and say from today, we wouldn't want a gun shot. And, and, and when that if, is you, done, if, you, if you just don't mind, just let us know who is leading the mediation. Who? Is that, what are you saying? Who, who is leading the mediation? Is it the Peace Council? There's or no the mediation. City? There's no mediation. As we thought, we have a temporal measure coming from the Peace Council. On two occasions, I took them to, I made the Peace Council to pick them, the Mampushis, the Moshis, the Kustasis, the Bistas, the Houses, the Dagombes, all of them to Bolga. They had a two-day workshop there. Some uh, preachers and whatever were done there. They adhered to it. We came back the following day, and there were gunshots. I am just returning last week from Tamale with them again, the same Boku Inter-Ethnic Peace Committee. And certain things were said, and they are beginning to smoke the peace pipe. I am very confident that this Boku Inter-Ethnic Peace Committee 
will be the catalyst around which we will get the peace in Baku. If they are committed and they are ready to work with each other, I think there will be peace in Baku. Right. Let's see it how this goes. And, and we wish you well and your committee as well, as well as the municipal uh, you know, council on security as you try to resolve this issue. And the National Media Commission issued a statement on Sunday urging the media in Boko to desist from fun intentions there. Richard uh, Kumado is a security consultant and also joins us via Zoom uh, with some analysis on this. Uh, Mr. Kumado, I'm sure that you're well aware that this has uh, persisted for a long time. Uh, the MC has just been telling us about the new approach to get the two you know, feuding factions to smoke the peace pipe. Do you think this will work? Definitely. I want to agree with many of the things my brother Peter uh, has said, the MP for war, that the security officers created opportunity for the powers that be, being in the traditional authority for the state itself to move in there and resolve the issue. But I think we, we, we have window dressed the issue of Boko for a very long time, and that is where we are now. I'm just hearing for the first time the inter ethnic community that has been formed. I think there's an issue of trust here. They don't trust themselves. So once there is trust deficiency, you may go to Boga, you may go to Accra and come, and the next day there will be a gunshot. I think we need to be bold enough, we need to be courageous, and we need to take the bull by the horn. That is the only way we can resolve this Boko issue. Thank you very much. That's Richard Kumado, a security consultant, uh, joining us there on the issue of uh, conflict uh, in Boko. You're watching Johnny's Prime with me, Ernest Mina. Now. <laughs>